All right. Good afternoon, all my artists out there. Um, welcome to the Ziegler Art Museum Spotlight Series Virtual Live Art Class. Um, we're going to start off by once again thanking our sponsors, um, Mr. Richard Boister, Home Bank, Safe Haven Enterprises, and Bubba Ostelet. Thank you for your support. Um, I do also want to give a shout out to LEH, which is the Louisiana Endowment of Humanities, um, and the NEH, which is the National Endowment for Humanities. Also, they also help make our programming um, possible this year. We couldn't do it without them. So, thank you. Um, so that's my little shout out to them. So welcome everybody. Now usually I have several pages to show you and kind of talk to you about, but we had a little mishap with the printer and I'm not able to bring that to you. So we're just gonna do some talking while we wait for people to join us. So this week, our spotlight series um, is, is highlighting the, a, a work of Elton Louvier and it's called A Moment in Time. And let me see, in just a moment, I'll have, a, I'll have a, a, an image for that to show you. So, <clears throat> Elton, a Louisiana artist. Here we go. <laughs> can you see that? Is that, can you see the, is it's there shine on it? a little bit of it? a glare. Just tilt right, it up a little tilt bit. Tilt it up a little more? Yes, perfect. All right. Beautiful work of his. He's really very talented um, in realism. I mean, you, this looks like a photograph. Isn't it beautiful? So this is called A Moment in Time. And I love it. I love that this, this old beat up wharf or dock area and this great Louisiana crane, um, some beautiful work. We are lucky enough to have five of his beautiful paintings in our um, gallery. So you are able to come and see them anytime you'd like. Um, like I said, uh, he was a Louisiana artist. Um, oh, I can't pronounce the town he comes from. Can you guys pronounce that? Someone has to pronounce that for me. I'm sorry, Mr. Patootville? Patootville? Patout? You think that's it, Ms. Tisha? <laughs> sure. I don't know. All right. So he was born in 1930 um, and passed away in 2014. And again, if you'd like to see some of his works, all of his works, they're really big. I mean, they look like you can walk right into them. They're, they're absolutely beautiful. Um, today, I was inspired by his doc, and I wanted to teach you guys a little, about, a little bit about One Point Perspective. Um, I'm going to pass this over. Thank you, Bailey, for sharing that with us. Um, first of all, we have uh, Carlos oh, uh, joining Carlos. with her kid. Hi, <laughs> with all the kiddos. Wonderful. <laughs> hi, it's great to see you. I'm so glad you guys are here. Um, so let's talk a little bit. Let's one supplies. I always got to go back over the supplies, right? You're going to need a pencil today and a really good eraser. Um, I definitely recommend these white erasers. Um, but if your pencil is, has a good enough eraser, it, it, it will work. We need crayons today. Um, if you don't want to use crayons, if you want to use your fancy crayons or your oil pastels, that will be fine. I just want you, if you're using oil pastels, be a little more mindful of rubbing your hand on your paper. The oil pastels really smear um, and crayons don't. So crayons will be best, but oil pastels would be beautiful too. Um, of course, we need our medium round brush. This is my go-to. If you only have one brush, this needs to be the brush, okay? Um, I love it. We have our water. And of course, in my water bowl, this is a great tip for parents. I highly recommend this if you guys are doing art at home with your kids. If you look, it's really sturdy. The kids aren't gonna be able to tip this over. And it also gives me an opportunity to play, have dirty water. So if I had paint on my brush, I can use this sponge and wipe off my dirty water. And that leaves my clean water nice and beautiful for my watercolors. Because again, we, oh, I just spilled water everywhere. Did you guys see that? All right. Oh, no. Oh no, We're all over my right poor side. sponsor paper. I'm just going to move that. <laughs> it's just water, right? Somewhere, okay. Um, did I mention the ruler? Okay, so you don't have a ruler. Um, any type of straight edge is okay. And actually, if you don't even have a straight edge, we can totally, um, you'll just try your best to do straight lines. It's not, it's not detrimental to the project. Um, and of course, you want some paper. I use a heavy duty drawing paper. It's not quite as thick as here. Oh, let's clean up some of this water so I don't ruin all <laughs> of our projects, guys. And, and that was what I was showing you that it wouldn't do, but that was because I picked it up crazy. Okay. So, um, again, I use a, a heavyweight drawing paper. Um, if you're using watercolors with me, you want a heavier paper. Um, 
but you don't have to use watercolor paper on this. Watercolor paper is a little more expensive, not a lot more expensive, but a little more expensive. And a project like this, it's just not a requirement. So, um, <clears throat> all right, so those are our supplies. So let's talk about perspective. Perspective, it's a pretty fancy word for, for us, right? And it's actually the viewpoint in which you're looking at an item. And there are several different perspectives. We're going to specifically today talk about one point perspective. Um, you can get up to two points and three points and actually even way more than that. Um, I love teaching perspective because once you understand it, it really makes a lot of sense and it really helps your artwork um, become more realistic and, and really gives you that space. In this flat piece of paper, we're gonna use lines to make space. So um, here's another one. And of course I was inspired by that beautiful dock. So we're gonna do a dock today. Um, we're actually gonna do this picture in, in this class, but I did with Crayon, wanted to show you guys if you wanted to challenge yourselves a bit and really make it a swamp scene. I would love that. Um, all right, okay, so Miss Bailey says she has got some fun um, art history fun facts for me. I love it, sure. go for it. Um, what you got? So I've learned that the father of One Point Perspective, his name is Filippo Brunelleschi, and he was a founding father of Renaissance architecture. Oh, okay. Um, now recognized to be the first modern engineer, planner, and sole construction supervisor. Wow. I well, had a fish named after him. Did you? Fun fact. <laughs> Brunelleschi, the Brunelleschi, beta fish. Brunelleschi, the beta fish. I love it. Um, well, that was really interesting. Thank you, Bailey. I love it. So, maybe wait a few more minutes. Let's go through some things for the week. We've, we talked about our sponsors. Okay, the art supply drawing. You you have a chance to win every every art supply I have on here, from the eraser to these watercolors to a, a brand new pack of crayons um, and a new brush, Miss Jessica's favorite brush. All you have to do is comment on our pictures, like our pictures, share our stuff so your friends can watch along. Um, you can watch this even if you're not doing the art project with us. It's still, it's we still try to make it fun and and, um, and interesting. So keep that around. Um, so we've uh, we've got six people watching. Go ahead and say hi to us so we can say hi back to you, and we can get you in that drawing. Um, the drawing happens on Monday. This week we did it Tuesday, but we'll let you know if we have to delay it. Um, and we do that Mondays at two o'clock. Um, let's see, if you're not watching us live, that is absolutely okay. You can still comment and, and let us know that you're doing it. We'll come back to you and, and say hi. And if you have any questions at all or any comments from me, just let me know. Um, Bailey is watching that comment screen so she can let me know as we're going along. So let's get started on this cool project. You ready? Mm -hmm. One point perspective. You only need two things, two things to do one point perspective. You need a horizon line, right? And a horizon line is where the sky seems to meet the ground, or in our case, it's the ocean, or maybe a lake, I don't know. This one looks more like a lake. Um, so we're gonna look at our paper and we're gonna, we want a good fingers width, finger length worth of, of sky up here, okay? So we're just gonna start on the left side of the paper and move over to your right if you are left-handed and happy left-handed day to those of you who are are who are left-handed today. yes today is left-handed day wow. that's wonderful so if you're left-handed you'll start from the right and go to the left but miss jessica's not so um now your horizon line it can if you want it to be super super straight you can do that but don't worry too much about it we don't even need our rulers we're just gonna i'm gonna give it kind of a bump and I kind of shortened it up a little, but that's all right. But that's, I think that'll be enough sky. Oh, okay. So Miss Jessica's drawing with pencil. I forgot to talk to you guys about this. I, my lines are going to be pretty dark so that you can see them on the screen. But what I want you to practice doing, I'm going to flip over my paper. We're going to practice. <clears throat> this is so important, you guys. It is so important to learn the skill of drawing lines lightly on your paper. But you, I just drew a little arch right there, but you might not be able to see it very well. So I have to draw much darker. But what I want to show you is that it's harder to, to erase dark lines. I was able to, there's still some there. But this line here, erased all the way. I can't, even, I can't see any of it. So practice what I call whisper, whisper drawing. So your pencil is barely on the paper. 
so that you can erase all your lines, okay? Um, don't worry if you if you make a mistake and you make it too too dark, it's not going to ruin your picture. It'll be fine. But I want you guys to start practicing that. It's super important. All right. So we have our horizon line. That was number one. That's what we need when we do a one-point perspective drawing. The second thing we need is a vanishing point. And a vanishing point is, is exactly what it sounds like. It is the point on your horizon where your item will disappear. So our dock or wharf, I don't know what you, I, I think it's more like a dock. It doesn't go all the way out to the horizon, but we're gonna start by having a vanishing point there on the horizon, okay? So you get to decide your one point perspective. You can do um, a dock like I did where it's straight on, where it looks like I'm standing right in the middle of this dock, right? And we're looking out. Or you could decide that your one point vanishing is over here on the side. That would be really interesting. If you'd like to really challenge yourself, go ahead and do that. But I'm gonna stick with the center one since we have, um, since this is class for the younger kids too. All right, so I picked a point right in the center of my page and I just put a little dot there. I made it much darker than you should because I want you to be able to see it. All right, so there we have it. That's really the basics of what you need to do one, one point perspective. Now we're gonna make sure that the items that we draw follow this vanishing point. And that means we're gonna come down to the bottom and we're gonna decide how wide do I want my dock to be? How much of my picture do I want it to take up? So um, these are both about the same size. If you notice about, about the width of my, I mean the length of my fingers, but remember Miss Jessica's hands are probably bigger than yours. So you get to decide how, how wide or how um, narrow you want it. So you're gonna follow that dot, that's the center, right? And if it helps you, if you wanna fold your paper lightly in half, let's go ahead and do that. This, ooh, my paper's not cut straight. All right, so I'm just gonna lightly push that. So I know, ooh, I got that dot right in the center. Oh, that was pretty good. So now I know that's the center of my paper. And I want my dot to be about that big, all right? So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna draw one line here. I mean, sorry, one little like dot. And I'm gonna go even Right about there. If you want to get really fancy and bring out your ruler and make sure that it's completely even and that it's completely the same on either side, I, you can go ahead and do that. Um, but we're not going to worry too much about that because we're just going to talk about perspective right now. All right, so now it's time for your ruler. If you don't have a ruler or your straight edge, you're just going to do your best. Don't worry if it's a little um, wavy or crazy because it could just be a wavy and crazy dock. Not all of them are perfectly straight. Don't worry too much about it. But if you have a ruler or a straight edge, maybe a thick piece of cardboard or, or a big thick piece of paper, you're gonna line up from the dot on her horizon, our vanishing point. Sometimes we call it a VP, I'm gonna put it right there, VP, that's a vanishing point, okay? And then it's gonna meet up to the other line I drew over here, and I'm starting on the right side, I'm right-handed. Um, and you're going to draw a straight line. I'm gonna draw mine darker than you should so that you can see it, I'm going all the way out. Hi, Lisa, nice of you to join us. I'm so glad you're here. Um, all right, so there we go. We've got one line going. So now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to put my ruler on my VP or my vanishing point. I'm gonna flip it around, okay? And I'm gonna line it up to my, vanish to my point right here and I'm gonna draw a line. All right, so right now what we have, it kind of looks, this could be so many things. Think about how many things this could be. This, you could turn this into a road disappearing out over to the horizon. Maybe it's a train tracks. Um, it could be lots of things. So remember, you can take this lesson and do a ton of stuff with it. It's just, you're only limited by your imagination. But for today's project, because we're making a dock, now we have to make another decision. We have to decide how far out does our dock go? Because I don't wanna, this, this kind of looks like a bridge almost. It could be a bridge also where it's crossing the ocean all the way. I don't want it to go all the way out there. So I'm gonna decide, I think I'm gonna stop my dock right about here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my straight edge. And you don't have to measure it. Just try to make it straight. Pick how long you want your dock to be and you're gonna draw a line, okay? right there. And now you're going to take your awesome eraser 
and you're going to erase the top parts of these lines. So you're going to erase your vanishing point and all of these lines that go out past your dock. I have to scrub really hard because I drew really dark. I hope you guys didn't draw as dark as I did. All right. So I erased a little bit of that line, but that's okay. I can still see it. So there you go. We have a one point perspective dock. Congratulations. I'm so excited for you guys. Once you guys get down one point perspective, um, maybe in a few weeks we'll then do something, maybe a two point perspective and, and we'll teach you how to do that. All right, I'm going to erase my VP here, my vanishing point. And now it's time to put our pencil away. I'm done with pencils. Um, Miss Jessica doesn't like to draw with pencils very often, especially with, with my kids, because we spend so much time trying to get it absolutely perfect and keep erasing. But every once in a while on a project like this, you need, um, you need that pencil. So it's time to open up our crayons, okay? Ooh, I have a brand new pack of crayons. Isn't that like the best day ever when all of your crayons are sharp? I love it. That's your favorite too, Bailey. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna put my pile of crayons right here. I'm not even gonna try and put them in a cup. I've learned in past weeks that I just <laughs> knock the cups over. So we're just gonna lay them out right here. I love crayons and I especially love Crayola. Um, but I do have to tell you, I've been seeing a lot of my art teacher friends sharing um, crazy art and I think Target has a, a brand name crayon that they have on sale for 25 cents a box right now and wow. these art teachers are doing comparisons of where using Crayola and using other brands and they really do look just as beautiful in fact for oil resist which is kind of what we're doing right now um, the, the your cheap your crazy art crayons are actually really good they're so waxy they leave a really good line so um, if you are it, so any crayon that you have is going to be amazing. Maybe next week I'll try a different brand and we'll see what it does. All right. So I'm going to start with brown. I'm going to start with the dock, okay? And so the dock is made out of wood. And I'm going to trace my lines. Okay? So just the lines of the dock that you have right now, I'm going to just trace it. And I want a good dark line because we're going to put watercolor on top of it. And one, the crayon's gonna help our watercolor stay in the section it's supposed to stay in. So when we paint the brown, the crayon will help it from bleeding into our ocean. And two, we want it nice and dark so it shows up against your paint, okay? So <clears throat> we're gonna add a little bit of detail, but if you notice, I have a lot of detail here where it looks like the grain of the wood, but we're not gonna add that yet. And I'll tell you why, because once you paint over it, you're gonna to have to redraw those lines anyway. So we're gonna wait till it's completely dry and finish and, and do the little details like that at the very end. But I do wanna go ahead and make my planks here. You see all these wooden planks? So I drew a pretty straight line. You guys saw that. If you wanna get really creative, if you notice here, I did almost a scribble line. So it kind of looks like my the wood has been cut roughly. It's kind of more of a handmade thing. Um, which I kind of like, so that's up to you. But if you notice my planks, how as we go, they're getting smaller and smaller as they go far away from you, right? And it's the very smallest one at the, at the tip. So that's what we're working on today. Our goal is to get the perspective right and make our planks that are close to us bigger than the planks that are far away. So I'm gonna start with my ruler, right? And I'm just gonna draw a line. Now, my ruler prevented me from getting that really dark, so now I'm going to go back over it. And I went ahead and did a really big plank, but I don't mind. That'll give me lots of room to, um, to put some texture. So, but my next one's going to be just slightly smaller. You don't have to measure perfectly. If you want to take the time to do that, that would be wonderful. Um, you can do that. But I just want to show you something fun without having to work too hard at it. But I do love perspective because it sneaks math and, and shapes and angles mm -hmm. in on you. And, and I do love that. So you see how my planks are getting slightly smaller? So that's what you're going to keep doing. Ooh, that one got a little too small. That's all right. I think I'm done with the ruler. I'm just going to keep going. Maybe start getting a little smaller. And you'll notice 
that you're running out of room in your planks to put a lot of detail. And that's okay, because as things get farther away, you're gonna see less detail. It's, it's farther away. Think about when you stand out outside a window and look outside, um, the trees that you see up close, you can see all of their leaves, right, and their branches. But if you look and see trees off in the distance, you can't see the individual leaf, you just see the one big tree. So, you know what that's called? What? That's called aerial perspective. That is aerial perspective. There's so <laughs> many, there's, you can have atmospheric perspective, there's lots of different things, but we're gonna, all right, so we're sticking with this. So there we go. We have our wonderful dock all done. So now I'm gonna pick a blue, because this is water. You can decide if you want it to be an ocean or a lake or, um, oh, it could even be a really big river. All right, so this is beautiful, kind of like this. I think I'm gonna go with this nice dark blue. Um, I really like the dark blue, there we go. So I'm just gonna trace my line right there. All right, so that covered up most of my pencil lines, so I don't really have anything I need to erase or feel like I should erase, so I'm good with that over to this one all right so um oh this is going to bring us to our question of the day too i mean the question of the week which I, we forgot to do last week oh i'm so sorry but we have a question of the week for you what do you prefer do you prefer sunset or sunrise what is your favorite because we're going to work we're going to do i'm going to say that this is a sunset because sunsets are my favorite time. I love the way the atmosphere feels and everything kind of gets a little softer and I don't like to wake up early so I never see the sunrise. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna do a little sunset and I wanna show you a cool technique. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm gonna use orange for my, for my sun. I used yellow in this one, but I think I, oh, that's scarlet. That's gonna be way too red. Let's, red, orange. Gotta find my right color. Here we go, just orange. All right. And for my sun, I'm just going to do a half circle because it's either setting or it's rising. You can decide what, which one it is. Um, it can go big and up and over your paper if you want to, or it can be just the tip of the sun. This is up to you. You get to decide. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go whoop, just like that. Just a little half circle like a rainbow. Make it nice and thick so my color stays inside where it's supposed to be. All right. And now... We're gonna go ahead and add these little lines right here, kind of like it's reflecting on the, the water. So I'm gonna use the orange first. I'm gonna show you just some little squiggle lines across. And sunlight is also kind of yellowish, so I'm gonna use my yellow and add a little more lines. And this is just gonna give the, the illusion that our sunlight is reflecting off of our water. Now when we paint over that, oh, well, I'll let you know when we get there. So if you would like to continue and add some really cool details, go for it. This can be an ocean. You could have a boat on the water out here. There could be a shark swimming over here. Um, this could be like a lake, like a Louisiana lake, and you could put some cypress trees and some lily pads. This is, this is the time where you would really make this your own and you can definitely fill it up. I'm not going to do that on this picture. We're just going to do this, but you can very, if you want to wait, pause the video, finish your drawing and then finish painting. That would be wonderful. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. All right. Are we ready to start painting? First thing we gotta do is get all these crayons out of our way. All right. I'm just going to set those to the side. I'm going to move my pencil and my eraser because I don't need those anymore. And I need my watercolors. All right. I love my watercolor palette. I'm very lucky to have 36 colors. Your watercolor palette might look different and that's fine. Yours might even look cleaner. My, Miss Jessica is a little messy with this one to clean off some of my browns. Um, so again, you have a chance to win a water palette just like this if you enter our drawing, okay? So share a picture of what you mm -hmm. guys do today. Um, tell us hello. Earlier, um, Carla said, fingers crossed because they need some good watercolors. Oh, they need some good watercolor as well. Yes, fingers crossed for you, Carla. Um, all right. So we're going to start painting at the top of our page and kind of go down, okay? So we're going to paint our sun first. So I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to wake up my colors. Remember, I wake up my colors by picking up clean water. 
and putting it into there. So this way, and then I wipe the brush off in my sponge. I don't know if you guys can see that. I think you guys can see this though. And I pick up more color and I'll wake it up. I mean more water and I'll wake it up. Wipe it off. You pick up clean water and I'm gonna wake up some oranges too. So we did like an orangey sun and maybe this bright like pinkish orange, that's pretty. All right, so my colors are awake, the colors I'm ready to use, and they are ready for me to come to them, okay? So if you have any loose pieces of crayon, just pick your paper up and kind of tap it, and it should get rid of those little pieces. Because if you rub it across, like Miss Jessica did right here, you'll, you'll make a mark on your page. All right, so you're gonna make sure your brush is nice and clean. I'm gonna pick up some clean water, and I'm gonna use yellow first. I'm just going to paint my sun. I'm going to put a little bright yellow right there. But while it's still wet, I'm going to take that opportunity to blend in some other colors. I'll go over to this orange. You see how when it was, this is called, um, well, not technically wet on wet because our paper is, is dry. But if your, your wet paints will blend together a lot easier. And I think I'm going to go all the way over to this pinkish orange. Let's see. Ooh, that's a cool sun. So even if you're just painting a sun, which you think, when you think about it, you're like, well, it's just a yellow sun. You can add lots of different colors. I'm gonna add a little more yellow to really darken that up. Look, isn't that cool? Yeah. So I hope you guys have some fun mixing those colors around. Miss Lisa also had said, got them watching. Oh, yay, <laughs> hello. Um, joining in. All right, so I'm actually, we're not gonna paint the sky yet. We could because we're using the crayon and it kind of holds it in, but I want to give my sun just a second to dry. So I'm actually going to come back down and we're going to do this part, okay? And that's because, like I said, I want each section to dry as we're painting something else. It'll prevent our, water, our colors from blending where we don't want it to blend. All right, so now I'm going to wake up, I'm going to wake up this tan color. It looks a little dirty on here. But I'm going to clean that up a bit. And I'm going to wake up this brown. So here's another thing to think about when you're doing your art and you're talking about perspective. Let's talk about colors. Colors, when they're close, when items, when things are close to you, colors are very vivid and very rich. Um, they're usually much darker and as you go away in an item, that color will get lighter. So I'll kind of show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with this darker brown on the bottom. Okay. And as I go up, I'm going to make it lighter and lighter. Now, I might have to come back and make the bottom darker as we go. So right now, I'm just going to, oops, I'm not going to worry about that too much. Um, I'm just going to paint the entire thing, paint right over my crayon lines. Remember, you want lots of water so that your paint goes around your crayon lines, right? You kind of can see right now how this the crayon lines are holding it together almost like little puddles, right? I love it. They're like little levees. So I accidentally painted the whole thing the dark color instead of the light one. So we definitely have to go darker. Mm -hmm. But as I come closer to me, I'm going to go a little darker. I might pick up some of this darker brown. But first I got to clean all that green off of it. All right. So I would love to hear, ooh, that got really dark. <laughs> ooh, let me add some water to that. Stands out. Now it stands out. There we go. Oh, that, that ended up much darker. I don't mind. Remember, with watercolors, if your color is too dark, you add more water. And look at me, I'm brushing right off the paper. I don't mind. That's why we have something underneath us protecting it. So we don't have to worry about that. But if it's too dark, lots add water. If it's not dark enough, take your wet brush and just swirl it back around in your color and pick up some color. I did not have enough water in that. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. I think that's pretty good. So it's got it's got a little darker on this side. But once get, as you get closer, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're here to have fun. All right, there we go. So now we're gonna do our sky because I use paper where our water dries pretty quickly. Uh, I mean, our colors. And I'm gonna flip my paper over. 
one, so that it's closer to me. I like to work closer to me. And two, so I don't put my arm in my wet paint and smear it everywhere. That happens. Have you guys done that to your art? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, because the sun is either setting or rising, our sky is very yellow. I love yellow skies. Um, they're just my favorite to paint. I especially love them against the blue because if you have a blue sky against the blue ocean, your paper gets very blue, which is why all my blues are missing. <laughs> So we're going to do, I'm going to use almost the same colors I used for my sun, okay? I'm going to start with the yellow. And again, so when you're talking about colors, the, the closer you are to the horizon, the lighter the color, okay? So we're, we're going to go from a light color on the horizon to dark up in the sky. So I'm going to start with my yellow right up against my blue. And I want it to be super wet. Because I'm going to blend some colors together just like I did. Um, is that Jalen? Yeah. Oh, hi, Jalen. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm, I'm, we're seeing lots of new names today. I love it. I'm so glad you guys are here. All right, so you see I added a little bit of that orange, the same orange I used on our sun. And now I'm going to pick up some of that pinky orange. Woohoo! Ooh, I like that. But let's water that down a bit. A little too dark to fit. There we go. So I just added some just some clean water and look at how that muted that color down. But you see how my, my colors, when you look at it this way, my color is the lightest by the horizon and it gets darker as you go up. All right, so let's do that again on the other side. Hi, Jade. Oh my goodness. Oh, Jade Lamb. Yes. She's one of our winners. So that I know they're using, um, well, I hope they're using their <laughs> watercolors that they won from us. Said she'll play the video for the kiddos tomorrow. Oh, wonderful. That's oh, I can't wait. Part. You can go back and start from the beginning after we're done recording so you don't miss anything. That's right. You can take your um, time. Our videos will be con will continue to be available on Facebook, but they're also available on our YouTube page. So hop mm -hmm. on up, Bailey. You want to tell them what they're you about that? Yeah, you can find us on YouTube at Ziegler Art Museum. Um, we have a couple subscribers already, so thank you if you subscribe. Um, we've got some more videos from last week to put up, but we will be all up to date pretty soon. Yep, we're really getting it up and going. I'm really excited that we have really gotten a, a virtual presence that the museum really hasn't had before. So, so some good things come out of this pandemic. We're on Twitter <laughs> as well. Oh, that's right, Twitter. And yes. I need to go ahead and... I don't have a Twitter account. Ms. Jessica doesn't Twitter, but maybe I need to start. You might like it. You I bet know. there's a lot of artists I'd love to follow. Oh, yeah. I'm sure there's a whole Hamilton fandom. Uh, uh, <laughs> if you haven't watched Hamilton, watch it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there is my sky. That's turned a little redder, and I, but I actually love it because our sun's really red. So mm. there we go. All right. So thank now you for subscribing, Jade. Oh, thank you, Jade. All right. So now it's time to, to paint our, our water, okay? And we're going to think the same way that we thought with our horizon. I mean, with our sky. You see how the lighter color is by the horizon and it gets darker that way. We're going to do it the opposite way coming down. So your colors are always paler at the horizon, okay? Sometimes you can break those rules and do it opposite. That's super fun. Um, but we're going we're gonna to stick with that today. You guys see how dirty my dirty water got? That's why I have <laughs> dirty water. All right. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna wake up some my blues, okay? So I'm gonna use this dark blue a lot, mostly because I have a lot of it left in this palette. And then I'm gonna wake up this medium one here. And then I'm gonna wake up this one right here. And we'll play with those three colors. So if you only want to paint just blue, you can just do one blue and that is absolutely fine. Um, in fact, I could challenge some of my older kids to use one blue, but still get the light to dark. Um, and I'll show you. Remember how if I do lots of color, it's nice and dark like that. But if I add water, it starts to get lighter. So you could actually use one color and still get the same effect that we're doing. But uh, I have so many colors to play with, we're going to play with them. So I'm going to be nice and liberal and dark down here. Remember, think about the direction that your water is going, okay? So to me, I feel like my water is kind of flowing like this, right? So I'm not going to paint up and down like this, just in case we see some lines. I want the lines going and kind of helping the movement of the water, right? I don't know why I washed my brush off. I'm getting the same color. Okay. We got them over here. Pick up a 
get some more color. So when you're painting, you want to be nice and slow at your edges. And look, even Miss Jessica does that sometimes. That's all right. I'll get some clean water and clean that later. But you can go faster where you don't have an edge. Remember, you want if you have a piece of paper underneath you, you can paint right off your paper. That really helps you. Now I'm going to go to this medium blue. They're pretty close, but just slightly different. You see that harsh line I have right there? You can leave it if you like that look. And it's the cool. I think I'm actually going to leave it right now. Let's see where that goes. I won't try to erase that harsh line yet. So I'm just going to keep painting. Just keep painting. No, I think I am. I'm going to. I'm gonna try to mix that line a little bit by just using some clean water and it just softens it a little bit. It just changes that a bit. All right. Oops, I got my dark color. Wrong color. <laughs> Back to the medium. And I'm gonna paint that medium all the way around my dock. Now, did you see how my wet paint went right over those lines? So, um, if your paint ends up covering some of your lines, you will just recolor them. And so, it, we didn't do a whole lot of lines. It's not going to be too hard for us to redo those lines. All right. So, that was kind of my medium brown. We're going to keep that going over here. You see? I love it. It's like magic. So the crayon, it's waxy and it doesn't like water. So the paint just kind of flows around it. Same thing happens when you use oil pastels. You know, when you share your finished pictures with us, we'd love to see, to, to hear what supplies you used. If you use crayons or oil pastels or, or watercolors, um, because these projects, if you wanted to color this project with, with crayon, you could finish it with crayon. You could finish it with colored pencil. It might take a little longer, but not everybody has access to watercolors whenever they want, especially the kiddos. Sometimes it takes your parents being willing to pull it all out, right? All right, I got a, got a pretty harsh line right there. I let it dry a lot. So I'm gonna try to pick up a lot of color and play with that line. I do have a couple more facts. On oh, go for it. We, uh, Miss Jessica loves facts, please. <laughs> she I hurt. love um, Renaissance art, and I'm sure y'all are familiar with Leonardo da Vinci. Um, the Last Supper was one of the most famous examples of one point perspective. Um, and actually, like the point that Miss Jessica drew, the vanishing point in this painting, it all the lines converge right at the head of Jesus. That's right, so, he is the vanishing point of that picture, correct? Yes, and that is just meant to draw your eye directly to the center. Yeah. Um, and then if you draw a horizontal line at the vanishing point across the entire painting, it hits every single face of the disciples in the painting, so. Does it? Yes. See, I love interesting stuff like that, stuff you don't really think about when you're looking at the picture, you just look at it for the beautiful piece that it is. And mm -hmm. And what a beautiful piece. Um, that's really interesting. I love it. Yeah. It was very well constructed. The lines in the architecture, like the ceiling and the accents on the walls, the table, everything just uh, everything disappears. Everything lines into one up point. into that one point. Um, and that's right. You can take one point in perspective and make it as detailed as, as that picture or as simple as this. That's the wonderful thing about this technique. So, what we have now is an ocean that gets darker as it comes closer to us, right? So it's lighter at the horizon. I have a really harsh line. I'm gonna try using my dark color to hide, kind of hide that. And that happened because I let that paint dry completely before I continued painting. So it it's- dry quick on you. It can, and it's not the end of the world. I don't absolutely hate it. I, and I kind of like the lines, it gives it some depth. Right, so our colors are getting lighter and lighter as they go away and vanish to our sun. Our sun is nice and bright. Our sky is done. We are done painting. Now, if you drew some extra um, trees and things like that, it might take you a little longer to paint, and that's okay. So, I wanted to show you some of the detail we're going to add 
with crayon. I'm waiting to see what part of this is dry. Natalie has joined us. Hi, Natalie. <laughs> I don't know if she watercolors. She watercolors with me sometimes. I love it. I miss having <laughs> you come in and watercolor with us. She said, come teach me, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So my son is pretty dry. That's the first thing we painted, okay? Now my sky's not dry, but my sun is dry. So I'm gonna show you, just like we made lines in the ocean, I mean, yeah, in the ocean, I wanna, I wanna add some detail, some lines and movement in the sun. So I'm just gonna take my crayon and color right over. You really wanna make sure your stuff is dry before you try this, okay? Do not try to use crayon on wet paper. Do you know what's gonna happen? I will tell you what's gonna happen. You're gonna rip your paper. It's gonna be sad. Oh no. It'll be really, really sad, I promise. So, um, so I went through and I just, you can't, can't really see the yellow, but I'm okay with that. I like the little orange lines. It very matches here. Uh, this is still wet, so I'm not gonna try. My dock seems pretty dry. If yours isn't, you're gonna have to be patient and wait. But I wanna show you ways to add a little detail to your wood. All right, so because these are wood planks right across here, right? And wood, you cut and, cutting the trees and you have all these different lines and different things going on. So my favorite thing to do is almost kind of looks like an eye where I start a line and I go up and I come around. Oh, it's not very dark. I guess it's wetter than I thought. And then I put a little circle in there and it kind of just looks like the knot of wood, right? Oh. Mine's still damp, that's why, oh, I almost ripped it there too. All right, so you can, you get to add detail. You could add, oh, you could add some white crayon on here and add some um, nice waves, that would be really cool. So give your picture some time to completely dry and you can really add some great detail. You can see on here where we did the wood, here, I'll show you on this too. So I'm just gonna go through and make some swirls and some lines, see that, see how, easily I can draw on this completely dry paper where here I was having it was not quite dry and it's not really showing up I like your clouds a lot in that one too. oh I didn't do the clouds okay so <laughs> the clouds I did oil uh, resist okay so before I did my sky I took a white crayon and I just really colored um, my clouds and what was really funny is that I had forgotten I had done it when I came back to paint my sky, they popped up on me and I was like, what is that? Oh, that's right, I did clouds. It was hilarious. Oh, hi, Carson. Um, so that's absolutely something you can do. You could even, after your picture is done, use your white cr crayon and add clouds. You can add so much detail, right? My sky's too wet to do up there. Um, and here you can see I've got the detail on the trees. And, and all of that. So use those crayons and, and, and add some great detail and show Miss Jessica what you got. I love to see the artwork that you guys do. Um, I hope you guys had a lot of fun and learned something. You join us at two o'clock for just a little more technical way of doing this project, um, a little better for the older kids. And again, we're gonna thank our sponsors, um, remind you all to to share, to like, to comment, to like our page, invite people to see, to watch this with you. Get yourself in that drawing to get some free prizes. Um, our sponsors, Richard Boyster, Home Bank, Safe Haven, Bubba Oslet, thank you again for helping us bring this to the community. Thank you um, so much. We'll see you guys soon. Thanks for joining me. Bye. Bye.